VMware VCF9 is here, and with that, there is a brand new installer for deploying it. Let's walk through the options right after this. So VMware VCF9 has been released a few weeks ago. And with that new release, there is a new installer appliance. We don't have to mess anymore with spreadsheets like in VCF5. We now have a web-based graphic interface, a GUI, web-based GUI, to enter all of the information needed for deployment. That means you don't have to mess with spreadsheets and upload it to the Cloud Builder appliance. It will convert it to a JSON. That's not needed anymore. You just deploy the appliance, the new Cloud Foundation installer appliance, open up your web browser, browse to the IP address, log in with account information, and just go through a wizard-driven setup process. Very nice, right? Let's get into that. Of course, the first step is start deployment of that appliance. You need to download it from the Broadcom website. If you have access to the Broadcom My Support to the support portal, you also have access to the download section in there. Now you can download the VCF SDDC Manager Appliance. That's the new VMware installer appliance. We have to deploy it on our um, server because that's that will do all the heavy lifting for us, right? So let's do that. Now you have to give it a name. Let's see we need to do some YouTube testing. If I can type today, YouTube test, that's nice. I will put it in this folder for YouTube demos. Then I will select a cluster on my ESXi machine. And now it will start the import process for this OVA. Once it has moved to the next step, you can review the details in there. And if you click on next, you have to accept the license agreement, of course. You have to select storage. Let's put it somewhere on my ESXi server. You have to select the networks. I already have a VCF networks in here, defined in there with VLANs, etc. And now this is a very important step because this gives you the option to enter passwords, enter network configurations, which will be used by this appliance, right? Make sure that you go through this. And now when we point our browser to that IP address of that OVA we do deployed, we will be presented with a login screen. This is the new login screen for the new Cloud Foundation installer. So enter the username, the username that's default admin at local, password, of course, the password you supplied during installation, and now we can log in. When we log in, we have a few options. You can already see that for deployment, we can deploy it now using a wizard. And this wizard is very extensive compared to the previous version of VCF. So this is something uh, very nice. The team worked very hard in uh, implementing this. Um, and as you can see here on the left side, I have the binaries depot configured already because this appliance, I have been using it for deployment. You can have, let's go to the depot setting real quick. Um, but not dwell there because I am using a offline depot. In another video, I will show you how to set this up. Basically what it does is you have to download the binaries for all the installation files, place it on that depot. And now the cloud builder installer, the found cloud, the VCF installer, I still have to get used to the new name. The VCF installer will get all the binaries for deploying your infrastructure from that depot, right? So let's go to the wizard. Because now we have a deployment wizard, we can choose to deploy VCF, Cloud Foundation, or VVF, right? In this video, I'm going to, to run through the setup procedure, the setup process for VCF. So let's click on VCF. And then you have two options here. There are two options in here. You can choose to deploy a new VCF fleet. Fleet is a new term. Or you can deploy a VCF instance in a existing VCF fleet. So let's click on continue. We have the option, so this is the wizard. As you can see here on the left side, there are several steps you need to complete and provide information. And these steps, they correspond with that spreadsheet you used when deploying VCF5. I will get, grab that in a second and I will show you how I use all the information in that spreadsheet I had to fill in the steps in the wizard here, right? 
So the first step is existing components. Do you have existing components you want to use in this new deployment? We can choose VCF operations or vCenter. I'm not going to do that because this is a greenfield situation here. So I will not select anything. I will just click on next. Now we have general information. As you can see here on the left bottom side, my progress has been saved. That means every step you configure in this wizard, you don't have to complete it in one sitting because there might be information you need to fill in here. And that might be depending on other teams. They need to give you that information. Maybe that information is not yet available, but you can go through the steps you already have the information for because it will save, like as you can see here on the left side, every step will be saved. So in a later, at a later time when you log into this appliance again and you want to continue your deployment process, everything that you have entered already will be in there. So that is very nice, right? Because you might change your mind, you might have information which is incomplete. You can now have that progress safe. So this is very important uh, to have. Um, all right. So if you have connected that offline depot or that online depot, it will pull down the information of the binary stored in there because based on the binaries, binaries and the manifest file which is in there, it will know which version of VCF can be deployed. As you can see here, I only have one version in here. I only have the version 9 uh, in here which, is, which I can deploy in my infrastructure. So there are fields in here and every required field has a red asterisk. So as you can see here, I need to give it a name and a management domain name. And the nice thing is, and also DNS and NTP, etc., etc. And the nice thing is, because I already deployed VCF 5 in the past, I still have that spreadsheet which was needed for VCF 5, right? To fill it in and then enter that in that Cloud Builder appliance for VCF 5. So all the information in here, I basically already have that. Let me show you. So if I look at the spreadsheet this is the spreadsheet we have when setting up vcf 5.2 right so this spreadsheet already has all my deployment parameters in there so most of the things i can just copy from this spreadsheet and enter in this deployment wizard right so if we enter this in this deployment wizard of course there is information here needed for uh, which is not in that spreadsheet but again your progress can be saved. So if you are missing some information and you need to get back to the installer after you get that information, you can just, if you close this installer, it will save your progress. Now, in this case, I have the option for deploying VCF9 because that those are the binaries in my depot. Now I can give it a instance name and I can just say a vikash.vcf um, instance let me type that name right and then we have a management domain so i know that in that spreadsheet for vcf 5.2 i already had that name right if i go to the deployment parameters i can see that i have deployed or configured the vcf cloud foundation management domain so i can just copy over this information and enter it here on the left side, when you do a new deployment, you have the steps to install and configure VCF operations and VCF automation. I'm not going to do that. So I will check this box. I want to connect VCF ops and VCF automation on different and six segments. So I don't have to deal with deploying VCF ops and automation at this point. I also want a simple setup. So that means I want a single node setup for NSX, so that's um, it will not take up that many a resource because this is only a lab environment, limited resources, right? So now I need to enter DNS names, I need to enter servers, NTP servers, etc., etc. So this information is already available in that spreadsheet I had for VCF 5.2. If I go back to that spreadsheet, I can see that I had DNS server in here. So let's do that. This is a DNS server. My DNS domain name will be, let's see if I have it in the spreadsheet. Yes, there it is. Let's copy that over. And also that NTP server, I know that I am using the same NTP server. So again, information is already available in that spreadsheet. Use it and check what you are missing and save your progress supply that new additional information and deploy your VCF instance. 
Another very nice thing is um, password creation, right? So I want it to automatically generate all the passwords it needs for um, when it is deploying all the appliances in the back end for every in appliance which it needs to deploy in the back end, vCenter, it will automatically generate passwords. That's exactly what I want, right? So I will check this box and in the end it will present me with the passwords it generated. So let's click on next. Now I can set up the information in here for vCenter. Again, I already have this information in my spreadsheet for vcf 5.2. If I go back to that deployment parameters tab and scroll to or find the vCenter parts that should be here. Yes, there it is. So vCenter, this is the information I need. Once I've done that, I will click on next. I have to enter the NSX manager information once again. If I go back to the spreadsheet, I can see and find the NSX information is already in there. So the only thing to do for me is copy over this information and now I can move forward. Let's do that real quick. Once I've done that, I can move to the next option. You can again see that it is saving my progress. That's very good. So for storage, the new option here is NFS because in the past with VCF5, it was only allowed only vzen was available right for deploying as a storage layer in your vcf now we have nfs version 3 there as well of course we can do vzen so in my case i'm using isa because i have nested hosts it is already presenting me with a data store name i will leave it at that again you can go back to that spreadsheet because you already had vzen information in here right if we just scroll real quick we can see that we have fees and information in here. This is here. It is the data store information. This information can be, of course, reused in this deployment wizard. It is generating some names for me automatically. I will leave it at that. Let's click on next. The nice thing is it is already also saving my progress. So that's nice. So now it's time to connect our ESXi hosts and to connect the ESXi host, we need to enter a password. I made sure that every host has been deployed with the same password. Let's add a host here. And just to go to my host, I know that I have FQDNs for them. And the FQDN I am using is, these are the reservations I made in my PFSense. So let's just enter them here real quick. So I entered the FQDN of all the, all the ESXi hosts I'm going to add in this VCF deployment. Now, these hosts, they need to have some unique configuration options. Uh, again, I will link a video in the description where you can see how to prepare your host. They need to have a unique certificate. That means after deployment, you need to reconfigure the certificate, reissue it on the host itself. There is a command for that. And you need to make sure that DNS and NTP is configured in there as well, of course. So once I've made sure that I have the host, in here, everyone is green, so I will confirm the self-signed certificates. And now we can click on next. It will try to configure or communicate with the host, so we have to wait for that to finish. Now it has all the information to actually deploy the appliances on the ESXi host and reconfigure those ESXi hosts for a VCF workload domain, a management domain, that's the first one. So for the networks part, again, we can fall back on our spreadsheet, right? Because here in the host and networks tab, you can see that all the network information is here already. So we need to just copy over the information we need and paste it on the deployment wizard, right? Let's do that real quick. So now that we've entered all the information in here, we can click on next. Time to select the distributed fee switch configuration, I will select default. And then I will open up the distributed switch, which will be created and then enter the information here as needed. Again, I can refer to that spreadsheet I already have. Let's fill in the information real quick. And once we've entered the information in here, we can click on next. Of course, it will save the progress. That's exactly what we want for the SDDC manager. We can enter a name in here. I already have a name defined here for my SDDC manager. Let's grab that real quick. And enter it in here. 
are all right. Click on next and now you will be presented with a summary. So in the summary, you will see everything with that you have entered in here for the configuration part, right? And you can review it, of course. You can review the JSON, right? So if you check the JSON, this is something you can download because when you want to redeploy your VCF instance with VCF9 and you have already downloaded this JSON in this JSON spec, in this specification, you can just go in there and then adjust settings in the JSON file and then in the beginning of the Cloud Foundation installer, you can just import that JSON spec. So once we know that everything is okay in here and now I want to have a reference JSON spec file, I can choose to download this and it will just download it on my machine. And now that we have that JSON file downloaded, let's check it out real quick. This is the JSON it has downloaded. It is one big JSON file. Basically what you're seeing in there is when you click on the JSON preview, this is the information we have. Now, this JSON file can be used to deploy a new setup using this JSON file. And then you don't have to enter all the information. Let me show you, show you real quick. For example, if I go back, if I click on close and I say save and close just for good measure and I want to cancel my progress. So now my VCF installer is empty again, right? I just purged all the information I entered in there, but I don't want to use that deployment wizard anymore. I want to deploy using that JSON spec. So I click on that, I click on choose file, and now I can just click on that file, that JSON file I already have and it will import all the information I already had entered in there and I can even edit it in the wizard again. So if I click on edit wizard, I can go through all the settings again and then all the information I entered previously will be in the JSON and will be available in here. And there we have it. That's the new VCF installer, a wizard driven configuration, graphic interface, available from your browser you can just on enter all the information in there if you already have vcf5 deployed you can just grab that spreadsheet a lot of information you can just copy over of course depending on your configuration your network and your environment so make sure that everything is unique compared to your vcf5 environment of course and this will this gives you also the steps in saving your progress if you don't have all the information you can just enter the information you have it will save your progress if you get the additional information from the teams in your company then you can just continue where you left off a very nice addition and making it easier and simpler to deploy vcf9 as always thank you for watching i hope you learned something new in this video don't forget to click on the like and subscribe buttons below the video it helps out my channel a lot and let me know if you have deployed VCF9 or planning to move to VCF9. Leave it in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. For now, take care and see you in the next video. Bye.